been a while. Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. Jeff Lindner, off of a well-needed break, sir. It's been a while. How are you? <laughs> well, I think we've I think we've sort of uh, gotten back to the new normal after barrel a little bit, you know. You have busy uh, been a busy man because I, I think, uh, or maybe people realize or don't realize, a lot of your work comes post tropical cyclone with survey work and you've been driving the miles and uh into some pretty nasty areas i would imagine taking watermarks and things like that yeah we did we covered a lot of ground on the coastal storm surge and also on the freshwater flooding or well the freshwater high water we didn't have a lot of significant flooding with barrel but uh I think we'll put together a, a barrel podcast and delve into all the numbers and everything i know there's a there's some narratives out there that uh, aren't quite necessarily true on, on what barrel was and, and stuff like that. So uh, probably in the next week or so, we'll put together something on what really happened with barrel and how strong it was and all the data and all that good stuff. <clears throat> yeah, looking forward to that very much. So we're just going to do this uh, short podcast this evening. We have some rainy weather um, in southeast Texas. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And then just a quick update on the tropics, even though it's quiet, we'll, we'll I guess, say why it's quiet. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, uh, just a reminder to not let the guard down because it is going to get busy. So um, infrared, we're seeing the moisture out there. and we, we basically have two mechanisms, Jeff. We have a um, frontal boundary moving in from the north that is, as they always do this time of year, typically stall north uh, colliding with tropical moisture and here you see it on the infrared from the south and that collision point is right around southeast texas and we started to uh, to see some of that rain today and uh, what can we expect for the next several days are you thinking right now yeah i mean you can definitely see it we have this uh tropical moisture here in the southern gulf of mexico that's being pulled north i uh, actually had a pretty decent flare-up of, of thunderstorms down here this morning there's a tropical wave axis right here on the yucatan that'll be pushing over in this direction but mm -hmm. all this big thunderstorms down here as a result there's a little bit of a circulation here you can kind of make it out in the cloud yeah. pattern this is an upper level that's not at the surface it's way up thirty thousand feet in the air and this is kind of helping vent all of this out here or the, the, the air the air in the upper levels is spreading apart. And so when you get spreading apart air in the upper levels, uh, you could, you pull it from the surface up vertical as the air is rising, you get these big thunderstorms. And so there's no surface low. It looks, it looks impressive on the satellite, but there's what I like to say, there's nothing under the hood down here. Um, there's nothing at the surface. And so just a lot of moisture. And, you know, this is, this is the type of pattern uh, that you can see, you know, we're over here today, we had four, almost five inches of rain in a couple spots right next to areas that had virtually nothing. Yeah. And that's the type of pattern where you get, you could, you could just get completely dumped on um, four or five, six inches of rain in a couple hours, street flooding, all that bad stuff, uh, and then drive a mile or two and, and absolutely have virtually no rain. And, and that's, that's just the, the air mass we're dealing with. These storms blow up. Uh, produce a lot of rainfall and kind of die out, you know, kind of where they blew up and and we get the uh, the street flooding for the most part. Luckily, I think we're, we're, we're sort of pulling back a little bit on the widespread heavy rain that maybe we were looking at uh, yesterday. Unfortunately, again, out here in the hill country in, in <laughs> Central Texas, uh, you know, Barrel missed this area and, and yeah. I think there was a lot of hope, I think, again, with this pattern. And unfortunately, it looks like with some coastal troughing later this week, um, it looks really wet, but it's, it's probably going to be down on the coast. So, you know, kind of those areas south of I-10, down there, Matagorda, Bazoria, Gaveston, Chambers County. You know, what's interesting is <clears throat> we had that little front come in, oh, Friday of last week. And, and Friday night, those storms blew up down in Bazoria County, nine and a half inches of rain yeah. down in Bazoria County on uh, – Friday night, Saturday morning, you know, none of the models got that. This is the type of air mass that can do that. You know, these are ballpark general numbers, but it would not surprise me at all if somebody south of I-10 got 10, 12 inches of rain this week. Um, it's just, this is the type of air mass we have, the tropical air mass. And uh, I, I think a lot of this is going to be along the coast or maybe even offshore and inland areas, you know, we're starting to cut back. You're kind of getting your rain today 
Monday, and then we're kind of cutting back as the as the week goes on. This kind of settles down toward toward the coast. You know, the good news we're looking highs in the low to mid eighties. Yeah, get, I mean, yeah. Well, we're we're in that pattern. You know, we've seen this a couple times now, Jeff, this summer, where we've got the highs on either side of us, and then we're just kind of right in the middle of that trough that dips down, and so we have the cooler temperatures in the rain. Yeah, it's not where you want to be in hurricane season. No. Um, thank goodness there's uh there's nothing out there right now threatening because you want you kind of want high pressure on top of you. Sure. Again, tropical systems steer around high pressure and kind of in toward or toward low pressure. And so, you know, just like what we saw with Beryl, this this central US trough uh is is kind of a staying feature so far this year with the high pressure here in the southeast and western Atlantic. And so Again, looking down here in the hurricane lanes, quiet. Um, we've got a lot of dust. We'll take a look at that in a second. But the quiet's not going to last. Um, and it, we're starting to see some hints of this now. If you just kind of look at the entire Atlantic Basin, you can see here in the Gulf of Mexico, Central America, the East Pacific, it's much more active thunderstorm-wise, right, compared to the Caribbean and out here in the Atlantic. And this is uh, increasingly favorable lift is approaching, and there's fancy terms for all that, but what it is, is is the atmosphere is becoming increasingly more favorable for showers and thunderstorms to develop, and this whole scenario is going to be spreading across the Atlantic Basin as we get into the first part of August, and so I think we've got another week, week and a half of, you know, downtime, if you will, the break. Uh, and then things are going to really start to ramp up, and, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if we have multiple storms going as we get into in, into August. And so, you know, if you use those hurricane supplies in barrel, now is the time to get out there, restock those kits, restock those supplies, because uh, unfortunately, the steering looks still off to the west, you know, Caribbean, possibly the Gulf of Mexico, southeast United States coast. That hasn't really changed much. Um, unfortunately, I have a feeling we're going to probably see some storms, some additional storms, like we saw with Barrel tracking through the Caribbean. Yeah, well, and Barrel formed where, uh, if I remember right, somewhere around 10 degrees latitude or something like that. I mean, it was, it was far enough south where it stayed away from the dust, and it was just in the, in, in the perfect slot, along with 96L, even though 96L didn't survive, but still it flared up right behind Barrel. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's kind of the uh, precursor, if you will, to, mm -hmm. you know, typically when we see Activity in the Caribbean in July, July is typically not a very active month, tropic-wise, period, but certainly not in the Caribbean. And when we see something like we saw with Barrel, uh, it certainly puts the red flags up there for later in the season. So, you know, just looking now, we're, we're good for the next seven days. We're not anticipating anything. You can see on the, on the IR, there's this wave here south of the islands out here off of Africa. It looks impressive. Um, but you know, the, the waves in front of it, you can see they've, they've kind of fizzled out as they've moved off the coast. And, and the main reason is this is what we call the Saharan air layer. And so a lot of people, what's well, the African dust? Well, what it really is, 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 is dry air that blows off the continent of Africa with dust. And you can see these concentrations of it. So the, the deep red here and white is really dry air and dusty conditions. And you can see it's spreading all the way across the Atlantic Basin towards the Caribbean and then into the Bahamas and, and Western Caribbean right now. Um, so there, there's quite a bit. It's, it's stable. There's not a lot of showers and thunderstorms. That's why, in part, that satellite picture looks very void of anything out here. But you can see the tropical waves down here kind of hugging the southern side of this. You know, this wave looks impressive, but it's going to wrap this dry air in there. And in the next 24 hours, it's, it's not going to look like much. And so for now, for the next 7, 10, 14 days, not anticipating a lot, especially out here in the Atlantic. I wouldn't rule out completely something trying to get going a little yeah. bit closer to the U.S. coast, just with the troughiness we have. Right. And, you know, just the potential for some of these fronts to limp off the coast and fester out there. Would it surprise me if, if something tried to get going close to the coast? Maybe not. But there's nothing. The models aren't screaming anything right now. And and the the overall atmosphere in, in the basin is, is relatively stable. So, Now's that downtime period before we start to ramp up toward the peak of the season and, and the first part of September. Yeah, and we all know what to do now. We've been through it, so prepare now. Oh, and, and Hopefully, uh, hopefully <laughs> we know what to do. Take lessons learned from Barrel and, and do what you can uh, now to prepare for the rest of the season because we are about to, the, to get to the busy part of the season. 
Good stuff, Jeff. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Of course, I want to remind you to subscribe to the Weather Insights YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe link. We'll have it in the show notes. And be sure to join us for the next Weather Insights podcast. Thank you, Jeff.